I will say that the one thing I appreciate about the BJP is that they have one parent company, the RSS. <laughs> you know, yeah. In America, both parties have so many parent companies; it's <laughs> really hard to keep track of. Right? Both parties answer to the likes of the NRA, Coke and Pepsi, Exxon, Exxon Mobil, Chevron, Tecron, <laughs> Raytheon, General Dynamics, Boeing, GM, the Wall Street Bull, the Wall Street Bull's balls, and whatever <laughs> and whatever Elon Musk's kid's name is. <laughs> I think it's pronounced as the dial-up sound. Is like it, yeah, I was going to say, is, is it just a bunch of noises? <laughs> 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 Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Forkful of Noodles. I'm your host, Chris Mohan. Hey, you guys might notice that uh, you, you, you hear a little bit of laughter in the background of these, uh, of these videos, of the Forkful of Noodles videos, and that's because these videos were recorded in front of a live virtual audience. That's right. I perform these, these shows over Zoom in front of a virtual audience that uh, laughs and participates through the show and it's a really fun time and if you uh, want to be a part of that show you totally can you can go to my website krishmohanhaha.com and snag tickets for these shows i do them once a month on the last friday of every month at 8 p.m eastern at 5 p.m pacific they're ten dollars but if ten dollars is a little bit too much if you're struggling financially and you still want to come check out this show that's not a problem uh, reach out to me, send me an email, DM me on Twitter, send me a message on Facebook, various different ways you can communicate with me. Let me know that you want to check out the show and, and you've hit some financial hard times, and I will get you a free code for the show so you can come, hang out, enjoy a, 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 a comedy show that addresses issues that you won't hear on corporate mainstream media, uh, and, and, and be around some like-minded, wonderful people. Uh, so again, if you go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com, you can snag your tickets and join the live virtual comedy shows that happen every single month. Thank you guys so much and enjoy this video. The question is, why is there so much hullabaloo over the Kashmir Valley? And this goes back to the Sultan dynasty and the land laws that were put in place way back then. Remember, at that point, the Hindus were a minority, but a high class minority. And this is very different than a high-class prostitute. <laughs> Don't get them confused, okay? There's significantly less nudity with high-class Hindu minorities. And <laughs> I'm fine with that, okay? <laughs> but this meant that the Hindu pundits could be landowners and were the bosses of the majority Muslim working class. They were also the bureaucrats who helped shape laws over time which would end up benefiting only them. Even after Gulab Singh sold the expansive Kashmir empire to the British, these land laws stayed in place. But in the 50s, Sheikh Abdullah changed those laws so the owner of the land was the one that worked the land rather than someone who had the economic means to purchase it. So in 1950, he enacts the Big Landed Estates Abolition Act. Huh. A populist measure wow. that impacts the Jammu Hindu and Kashmiri Pandit communities, who together owned most of the cultivable land in Jammu and Kashmir. Hmm. The act stated that the land belonged to the tiller and not the leaser. The land-owning Hindu minorities face huge loss of property. If you look at it today, in today's uh, situation, it would be the most progressive land reformer. Yeah. Eventually, the disputes <laughs> over the lands caused the Hindu pundits to leave Kashmir in the early 90s. This exodus made Kashmir an even more Muslim state, and for the Hindu-centric BJP, mm. this has always been a problem. 
It's been a long-standing mission of the BJP's parent company, the Rajasthriya Swayam Sevak Sangh, or the RSS, to make India a fully Hindu country. The BJP mm -hmm. and its ideological parent, RSS, the Rashtriya Swayam Sevak Sangh, have always had the abrogation of Article 370 in their manifestos. And this is largely due to the fact that JNK is the only state with a Muslim majority. Changing the demography of the Kashmir Valley and Hinduizing it is just one more step towards the RSS project of creating a Hindu Rashtra or Hindu country. This is similar to how Republicans want to make America a Christian nation, right? Well, there's a few things wrong with this, right? First, both India and America are secular rate nations with the freedom of religion as part of their constitutions. This means that you're not allowed, you're, you're, you are allowed to believe whatever you'd like. Okay. Secondly, it's doubtful that the politicians that preach this kind of religiosity actually follow the tenets of the religion. Both Hinduism and Christianity put weight in community, kindness, and making this world our heaven. They have very socialist leanings in their teaching, which means if you're a capitalist country, you are neither a Christian or a Hindu. Look, if either country was going to govern based on their chosen religion, they would ensure that homelessness wasn't running rampant through their country. They wouldn't strip rights away from groups of people that they didn't understand, and they'd be punching bankers in the taint every 45 seconds. <laughs> but since neither country wants to do any of that, they're ag not actually governing based on the tenets of that religion, but rather on the tenets of sociopathy and greed. But that's what the RSS and the BJP want for India, a Hindu Kashmir. And by revoking Article 370 and 35A, they've ensured that foreigners can come in and purchase land if they would like to, hearkening back to the days of the Dogra dynasty and the British rule of the subcontinent. This includes people from the Indian mainland who can now move to the Kashmir Valley and purchase property without getting a permanent residency in Kashmir. Under Article 370, Kashmir was an autonomous region within India, and this special status was given to several states to preserve the culture, language, and history. But the only special status that was under fire was the predominantly Muslim Kashmir. There are various other regions and even states in India that have been granted a special status and given such kind of rights in order to preserve the local culture and ethnic identities. There are also multiple places in the country where outsiders to the region cannot purchase land. This is also a means of protecting the local identities and people such as tribal groups who may lose their lands otherwise. Revoking Kashmir's special status is a clear attempt to forcibly change the demographics of the region and get rid of Kashmir's culture and philosophy of coexistence. I will say that the one thing I appreciate about the BJP is that they have one parent company, the RSS. <laughs> you know, yeah, in America, both parties have so many parent companies, it's really hard to keep track of. Right, Both parties answer to the likes of the NRA, Coke and Pepsi, Exxon, ExxonMobil, Chevron, Tecron, <laughs> Raytheon, General Dynamics, Boeing, GM, the Wall Street Bull, the Wall Street Bull's balls, and whatever, <laughs> and whatever Elon Musk's kid's name is. I think it's pronounced as the dial-up sound. Is like it, yeah, I was going to say, is, is it just a bunch of noises? <laughs> 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 I don't think it's a word. It's it's more of a noise that a, like a dying gazelle makes or something. But <laughs> the point is, there is simplicity in India's fascism, and I appreciate that. You know, I appreciate that. simple fascism is nice. <laughs> But look, India's push for a theocracy is basically carrying over the problem with partition. England split India and Pakistan over religious grounds. But we've seen how both religions can coexist in peace and cooperation in the Kashmir Valley. So the BJP and the RSS are just continuing Imperial Britain's agendas. 
And I think we can all agree that nobody wants to see India go back to anything resembling British rule. Well, maybe there's some people in England that might want to see that, you know. <laughs> For example, the Queen. If the colonies came back, maybe she would be relevant again. Wouldn't that be exciting? I mean, really, how sad is your existence that the only thing that gives your life meaning is, you know, like global indentured slavery? <laughs> it's a fucked up existence. It is. It is. <laughs> But India's pro-Hindu agenda isn't the only thing that's the center of the battle for Kashmir. It's also America. Yeah, the Biden administration has been calling for a full-out hot war with China, and India is a key player in this. Mm. The U.S. has been pushing India to be more aggressive on the Chinese border, and in August of 2020, they were. Tensions in the Ladakh territory almost led to a full-scale war between India and China, something that hasn't happened since the 60s. Now, India is part of the Quad, right? This is a coalition of four countries, the U.S., India, Japan, and Australia, who've agreed to stop China's human rights abuses. But all four countries are just going to go ahead and ignore their own human rights abuses. <laughs> As one does. Yeah, particularly the human rights abuses committed by India and the Kashmir Valley and its dissenting citizens and, you know, America's human rights abuses, well, everywhere. <laughs> it's just happening all the time, right? And look, that's not an exaggeration, right? America is an imperial force that's waging a war across the Middle East against mm -hmm. all people of color in its own country, against unions, cannabis, real journalism, and Christmas. <laughs> and the Easter Bunny yeah look there's also been a couple of skirmishes with Hanukkah but America doesn't like talking about that too much it's a little bit of a touchy subject bit of a touchy subject but now America wants to start a new war in the Pacific and America is also encouraging India to ban weapons purchases from Russia and start purchasing weapons from the U.S., which means this is more about arms sales than it is about human rights abuses. Also, I think we can all agree that calling this alliance the Quad just makes these four countries sound like the Avengers of warmongering. <laughs> but look, China also has interests in the valley, too. China and Pakistan have kept a close alliance to Kashmir's uh, a close alliance because they want to control Kashmir's water supply and have access for a pipeline to go from the Gulf to the China mainland. Pakistan has colluded with China, trading land at the border for strategic gains against India. In 2013, China and Pakistan announced the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor which essentially is a series of infrastructure projects in Pakistan. At the center of this is the plan to import oil and gas from the Pakistani port of Gwadar through pipelines over the Himalayas and Karakoram to Sinkyang. Last known, the CPEC was worth $62 billion. And here is the clincher. The CPEC will not only occupy vast tracts of what was once Kashmir, but will also depend heavily on the Indus to generate the power needed for it. Now, it's worth mentioning that all this is going to achieve is China and Pakistan poisoning that water supply since every pipeline ever, ever has leaked. This once again shows how none of these nations actually care about what Kashmiris think. They're just trying to battle each other for resources that don't belong to them. They've changed laws, imprisoned the people in their own countries, and wrecked the beautiful land with endless battles, all for just a couple of bucks. Right? But no amount of currency can make up for the human cost that's paid in the valley. And at the end of the day, what happens to Kashmir should not be dictated by India, Pakistan, China, or any other nation. It should be determined by its people. We should ask them how they identify. 
The answer is probably as Kashmiris. There you go. Yeah. While we're at it, we should probably also ask what Pluto identifies as. <laughs> Instead of just sticking a label on it based on our ill-conceived notions. <laughs> Look, Kashmir deserves its autonomy. And because of how it's been treated by India, Pakistan, England, China, and the U.S., they all owe, owe Kashmir any kind of help to help them get back up on their feet. Perhaps if Kashmir was allowed to thrive, we could learn how to coexist in a world with different beliefs. We could learn to value and grow from those dif differences and close the fascist Pandora's box for good. The end. Thank you guys for hanging out. Woo! Woo! Hey, Mr. Chris. Good show. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate that.